So, the big day has finally come. The President of the United States will arrive to Israel and will try to do the unbelievable and close a deal between the Israelis and the Palestinians as he promised at his famous press conference with Netanyahu. But I would like to see a deal be made. I think a deal will be made. And I think we're going to make a deal. It might be a bigger and better deal than people in this room even understand. <sighs> deal, 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 deal. How much does he love this word, huh? Everything is a deal for him. The nuclear agreement with Iran, a deal. To him, it's a bad deal, but still, a deal. Obamacare, a deal. The worst deal, he claims. Peace in the Middle East, a deal that no one before was able to make, but he will, because Trump is the master of the deal, the author of the art of the deal, the man who closed thousands of deals and made the ultimate deal with the American people. You'll vote for me, and I will... We'll see. I don't know, but it will be great. But what is a good deal? When do we Israelis say, wow, that's a great deal, an unbelievable deal? For example, when you're offered an apartment that's worth one million for half a million. That's a great deal, right? To buy an apartment that's worth a million for exactly a million is no special deal. It's fine, you'll do it, but you won't go and brag about it afterwards. For Israelis, a great deal is buying something way below its actual price. That's a good deal to us. But what about the other side? The one who sold you an apartment that is worth one million for only half a million? Did he make a great deal? No, not at all. He probably needed the cash and had to settle for less than it's worth. This is a bad deal that will cause frustration and buyer's remorse. So the problem with the way Israelis understand the word deal is that it portrays a victory of one side over the other, a winner and a loser. In the business world, a deal means understanding, compromising. No one gets what he wants, they meet in the middle, compromise, compromises. Remember when Trump mentioned it to Bibi. As with any successful negotiation, both sides will have to make compromises. You know that, right? <laughs> Both sides. Ah, both sides. So Netanyahu is laughing because I guess he thinks the Palestinians are far from willing to compromise, so the whole idea of an agreement is irrelevant. And he might be right. But the truth is, we Israelis are far from there as well. When we talk about peace, we fantasize about the craziest deal ever, keeping all the territories, all Jerusalem, no return of refugees, no army, that's the deal every prime minister tried to bring and for some reason failed. Because once we'll finally be ready, there will be a compromise on the territories and in Jerusalem and returning of refugees and weapons. In each issue, no one will get what he wants. That's how it will end. And it's not about any American president. It doesn't matter who will be in office. Obama, Trump, Michelle Obama soon. They are not relevant. It takes two leaders will be able to tell their people that their dream, the ultimate deal, is not realistic and it's time to wake up. Are those leaders Netanyahu and Abbas? I doubt it.